In this video, I'm going to show you how I intuitively orient last layer edges throughout my F2L, and I think this is a technique that I use a lot in one-handed speed solving. Okay, so in one-handed solving, probably my main focus in F2L is actually trying to orient last layer edges. Um, in the advanced F2L module in the 3x3 tutorials, I have a quite in-depth tutorial about how to intuitively orient edges throughout your F2L, and I'll show you some examples here as well as give a little bit more advice, but that's the main video you should look for that you should watch for um, actually learning how to do this. Um, in one-handed solves, I specifically go out of my way to do this because of the benefits that it provides. Um, the main one being that I'm then able to use, for example, COLL for my last layer, um, which is something that I'll talk about in uh, videos later on in this module. So basically for any F2L pair, there are so many different ways that you can insert the F2L pair, and obviously some of those different ways will have varying effects on the orientation of other edge pieces around your cube. The aim with intuitively orienting edges throughout your F2L is to process and then decide which way you should insert an F2L pair in order to affect uh, yeah, your, the orientation of your last layer edges. So to give you a really simple example, just to start out, Let's say we have this final F2L pair uh, in this situation where we've got this edge up here and this corner down here. So normally we would do something like move this edge over here, take out the corner and insert it, leaving us with two edges oriented. But if the edge is over here or even over here or over here, I mean what we can do is instead of, uh, instead of rotating and solving it like this, we can do R prime U R to take out the corner. And when we do the R prime U R from this angle, this blue and yellow edge piece comes into the top layer oriented, and these two edge pieces aren't affected by that. So R prime U R moves this one into the top layer and keeps these two oriented. So then when we rotate and insert this F2L pair, we get all of our last layer edges oriented, which is very useful. In addition to orienting edges so that we can use COLL, um, doing this throughout our F2L also helps us avoid bad OLL cases, such as the OLL cases where there are no edges oriented, which are particularly tricky to do with one hand. The other thing with this is, we don't have to necessarily do it during our last pair all the time as well. We can also try and orient edges during any of our first three pairs as well. So that, you know, when we get to the last pair, we don't even have to think about it. We can just do a two generator, um, F2L solution with our edges, with our last layer edges already oriented if we've set them up correctly or if we've set them up during our first three F2L pairs. Using this technique requires really solid look ahead because now we're not only considering, you know, one F2L pair and looking for an F2L pair after that, we're also looking at the orientation of all of our last layer edge pieces around the cube and uh, considering those when we solve an F2L pair. Okay, so I think the main thing I should do is just show you a bunch of examples and outline my thought process behind intuitively orienting edges um, during the F2L. And basically the main way you think about it is there are many different ways to solve an F2L pair. Which way should you solve it so that you can orient your last layer edges? So let's start out with uh, quite an easy example for this first pair. So we've got this corner piece here and we've got a last layer edge here and a last layer edge at the back here. And let's say we've got this F2L pair, I mean this, this F2L edge that we need to insert into the front right slot. So we can insert this, um, this piece in you know, countless ways, but uh, we can insert it in a way that orients this edge and also orients this edge by doing this. So R U R prime U prime to take out the corner and then insert this into the back right slot like that. And now we've got these two edges oriented and which is, that's a, that's a really nice setup um, for the rest of our F2L, and we should pretty much definitely be able to um, keep these two oriented as we complete our F2L. So next piece, the next pair we'll do is this one, and if we do it with two hands, we can do something like F U R U prime R prime F prime, and then insert it. But when we did that, this edge remained unoriented. So this yellow and blue one, um, when we did those moves, uh, actually came into the top layer with the blue sticker on top. An easy way to do this and orient this edge piece um, is just to rotate and solve it as we would probably normally by inserting the corner into the back right slot and then inserting that. And now we've literally got three of our last layer edges oriented uh, before we do the final two pairs and we should easily be able to do these two um, without messing up any of the orientation of these edges. So we can go ahead and solve this F2L pair and then solve this one. And now we've got um, a last layer, which we can do pretty easily. 
So this is just a two generator last layer. Just a, a random case that I know, it's just a combination of soons. Um, but basically that's the, that's the a really key advantage of orienting edges in your F2L is you can give yourself COLL cases and then, uh, and then have EPLLs. Or even better, you know, have ZBLL or 2GLL or something like that. So as I said at the start, um, I do go out of my way to try and do this, but obviously don't be unrealistic about it. So there'll certainly be solves where it makes more sense to actually just do your F2L quickly and not worry too much about edge orientation because it, the, yeah, it may be too hard or there's no, yeah, easy cases for orienting your edges. Um, and for those situations, you just kind of have to deal with it. So let's do another example and I'm going to outline my thought process. Okay. So to start out with this F2L, um, we've got the option of doing this F2L pair or doing this F2L pair. Now notice that if we actually do this F2L pair by doing an RU2R prime to set these two up, then that actually brings down this orient, this edge that's already oriented in our last layer into the middle layer, which is not what we want to do. What we want to do, our goal is to try and bring edges from the middle layer up into the top layer oriented. So that's kind of reversing a, a good thing that we already have here. So my intuition would probably be to actually solve this F2L pair, and that keeps this one oriented over there. Now, again, we have a couple of options. Um, we've got this F2L pair, which we'd probably do. And notice that when we solve this one, we're going to bring this edge piece into the top layer oriented, as well as this edge piece into the top layer oriented. So R prime UR brings that one into the top layer, and then U prime R UR prime brings that one into the top layer, and it's oriented as well. So now if we rotate over here, there are, are yeah, a few options for us to consider. Um, we've got this nice little block, let's ignore that. Um, so we can either solve this pair or we can solve this pair. Now in two-handed solving, let's say I get a situation like this, what I would probably do is actually take out this um, edge from the back right slot here, pair it up, and then continue on. But in one-handed solving, doing that would actually move this edge piece from the top layer to the middle layer and misorient it. So it probably it makes more sense if you want to keep our edges oriented to just do this um, do this F2L pair with two generator moves. So just using R and U moves. And um, because this piece in this slot is an F2L piece, then we don't really care what happens to this. And we know that you know just using R and U moves will keep all of these edges oriented. So we can solve these two by doing something like this, and then just rotate and solve these two. And also notice that when we're orienting edges, if we orient edges at the start of our F2L, there is also potential for us to do easy winter variation cases, so kind of uh, force an OLL skip like that. Okay, so let's start out with a slightly harder case this time. We've got these three edges misoriented, and this last layer one is in this back right slot here. Um, so let's see if it makes sense for us to try and orient all of our edges, or whether it's easy to just go ahead and solve our F2L normally and not worry about these too much. So the first F2L pair that I see, or the first one I would do, is these two. Like that. And now we've literally got all of our four last layer edges oriented in our top layer. Um, misoriented in our top layer, sorry. So it's not looking very likely that we're going to be able to orient all of these edges. Let's try and just orient a couple of them. So the next pair that I would do is probably these two. Like that. And literally, again, we have zero of our last layer edges oriented. Um, we can try and do these two next and insert them into the back. Now we've got these two. Um, if we want to orient a couple of edges, what we can do is instead of rotating first and then just solving this F2L pair, what we can do is do an R U prime R prime, which brings out this edge to the top layer. And it doesn't affect uh, the speed of our F2L pair very much at all. And then we can rotate and we've got this case, which we can just insert into the back like that. Or even better, we can insert and then do a sledgehammer in the back here. And that gives us all of our last layer edges oriented. And we can do a nice ZBLL after that as well. Um, so I guess that was a little bit lucky and we actually just oriented the edges, all four of our edges during our last F2L pair. It meant that we had a slightly longer last F2L pair, but it would probably make our last layer a lot easier. Okay, so we'll do one more example and then finish up. As I said, the orienting edges during your F2L video in the advanced 3x3 module is also a good reference for this thought, this sort of thing. So the first two, first F2L pairs that I see are this one and this one. So these two in the back here and these two here. Now I noticed that 
Um, I probably want to solve these two F12 pairs first and not worry about these because I would have to rotate to do either of these or this one. So I notice that if I do an R U prime R prime, I'm actually going to bring this edge to the top layer and orient it, but I'm going to bring down this misoriented edge from the top layer to the middle layer. However, I see that I've got this um, edge piece oriented, the red and green one, in the back right slot here. So when I solve this pair, um, this one won't become misoriented at all. So what we can do is R U prime R prime to bring this one up and then insert it into the back. And then I noticed that because I knew that because this edge would remain oriented, then I could solve it and also reorient or put this edge from the middle layer back up into the top layer uh, oriented like that. Um, okay, now here's a fun case, I guess. So now what we want to do is insert this F2 L pair or solve this F2 L pair and then, um, and then orient all of our edges. So actually the default thing to do in probably two-handed solves would be to do L prime U2 L and then insert it, which actually misoriented both of those edges. Um, actually, well, it, it misoriented this edge. It kept this one oriented and um, this one remained misoriented. So uh, what we can do instead to orient this edge and keep these two oriented is something like this. So we can do an L prime U L. So what we did there is L prime U L actually brought this edge down into the middle layer here and kept these two oriented such that when we rotate to actually go ahead and solve this F2L pair, this one is now oriented for us. Uh, so we can just use R and U moves to move it into the top layer like that. And now we've got these three oriented and um, it's pretty easy to just go ahead and solve this one and uh, keep them all oriented. So put the corner in and like so, and a nice another ZBLL. So overall, this is something that's mostly intuitive. You will need to go away and experiment and practice uh, with this sort of thing. But in my opinion, yeah, the costs are very minimal, especially at the start of F2L. If you're just solving an F2L pair in a slightly different way or, you know, adding one extra move or two extra moves here and there to influence your edges, then that can be very beneficial. As opposed to, you know, let's say you get to your last F2L pair and you want to solve it and there's no edges oriented on your top layer, on your top layer, then it can be a little bit difficult to actually orient all the edges right at the last pair. So it's something I try to keep in mind throughout my entire F2L as I think that's where it's most beneficial.